Two Japanese giants are joining forces. SoftBank and Toyota said they'll develop the driverless car services. Their joint venture is called Monet. Oh, well, Monet. Oh, no, Mobility Network. Well, that's what it's short for. It's nothing to do with the French painter. Which <laughs> Monet plans to roll out self-driving hospital shuttles with exams done on board and mobile offices and amongst other things. Monet. Oh. Meanwhile, Tesla's Model 3 is now the best-selling luxury car in the United States. The Model 3's success comes despite Elon Musk's recent controversies. Only days ago, he agreed to step down as chairman, and he paid a $20 million fine after U.S. regulators said he'd misled investors, claiming he had funding to take Tesla private. Edelman is a marketing consultant. He joins me now, Richard Edelman, the CEO, one of the Hello. greatest thinkers in the business on this Thank subject. Um, Elon Musk and his tweeting clearly has damaged the brand when the brand itself is robust because the product is loved. Elon hurt his company um, by having that tweet. Um, but the bigger message for CEOs is you're expected to stand up and lead now. Two-thirds of people tell us that uh, don't wait for government. Get out there and talk. And talk because your employees expect you to do so. It's really important for CEOs to absorb this message, that they are actually the change agents instead of government at this time. Hang on. But this, we've, we saw that with transgender bathrooms. We saw it with the immigration ban. We've seen it. You've got many of the examples where CEOs have led the way, or the brand has been used. Colin Kaepernick and Nike at the moment with the advert for that. But it's a risky business. Actually, companies are smart if they play in this game in their swim lane. They have got to do it. Two-thirds of people, again, say, I'm only going to buy a brand if the brand stands up and speaks on my behalf. This is a fundamental change. It's the rise of brand democracy. And what you see is somebody says, I can best affect the world by what my purchases are. So when do you know? when it's time to put the brand behind. A good example would be same-sex marriage or marriage, it's called marriage equality. Now, marriage equality 20 years ago or 15 years ago or 10 years ago, the, the balance of views was very different than the, than the views today. You could arguably say when a company gets on board on one of those things, it's just riding a winning wave. But example, the Dove campaign for Real Beauty, which is a real winner for that company, increasing sales every year, now they have the Dove Beauty Studios, all staffed by women, and it's an incredible advantage for them. So, how, assuming I was paying your reasonable fees and were able to get your advice, how would a company handle Me Too? Not only a case of a claim, but putting forward a view of, of equality, transparency, and fairness. Or would you run for the hills if you were the CEO, frightened of what might come your way? I think that there's a distinction between corporate reputation and brand marketing. So on the corporate values, you've got to stand up and speak up on behalf of your female employees. On the other side, on brand marketing, if you're a brand like a Dove, where it's female-oriented, you need to have position. Why was Nike brave and right to do what they did with Colin Kaepernick and not brave but failing in doing it? They recognized that their market segment was urban, young, millennial, and socially conscious. And they caught a moment in time where they could lead. And they were seen as taking a risk, um, but it was a smart risk. And you've seen that their sales have gone up. And there are other companies that are coming into this same area. So um, in a different way, a company like HP, with the all-American family campaign for what they're doing with printers, you know, showing diversity in America. That's a constructive use of marketing. Does it work? I mean, at the end of the day, don't the public see artificially constructed families to appear in rainbow colors in a Norman Rockwell redux environment as being somewhat manufactured? It's a big change in the ecosystem you see now that there's an equal response to product advantages and brands taking so a stand. So what do you tell your clients? We are saying you've got to take a stand. You need to find areas in which there's a need in society and you can fill it and be brave. 
go for it because the customer will respond, will buy the product on that basis. Stay here. Don't, don't go anywhere. I want to remind the question we're asking at this hour. What would it cause, what would it cause you to delete Facebook? Uh, you've seen the various things. It's uh, the privacy issue, uh, of course. It's its useful, lack of usefulness, the toxic environment, or you wouldn't delete it at all. 53% of you at cnn.com slash join have answered 53%. But this privacy breach is a good example for you, every time you want to talk about, because... This shows a brand which was exceptionally strong now starting to have chinks and holes punched into it. Well, in fact, trust in social platforms has collapsed. We're now down at 20% in the UK, US, France, and Germany um, as a result of these violations of people's privacy and data and also a sense of fake news. So this need to build back has got to be premised on specific actions by these social platforms. Do you think they get it yet? Do you think Twitter, Snap, Facebook? I do think they get it, but it's going to take a while for there to be proof of change. Finally, how would you vote on that? What would it cause you to delete Facebook? Privacy breach issues, lack of usefulness, toxic environment, you wouldn't delete it. I wouldn't delete it because it's a necessity 50% of Americans do not watch mainstream media anymore. This is an urgent channel, and it's got to improve. We've got to make sure that it has quality material on it. That's paid for, not free. That's both. Um, because, you know, the, you, you actually ultimately have to have consumer-generated content be important. I'll show you what the results are. The results are in, and most of it say it would be privacy for you to delete Facebook. 53% of you. Number two is lack of usefulness. Very, you're, you're, you're not a leader on this. That is, very few of you say you wouldn't delete it under any circumstances. Richard, very good to have you with us. As well. To talk. Thank, Thank you very much indeed.